So I picked up this 80,000 BTU heater. It says it's good up to, up to 2,000 square feet. This place is about 1,500 square feet with uh, 12 foot ceilings. No insulation yet, but it's gonna get insulation. So I think this thing should do it. I got my gas line coming in there. I have some wiring for the furnace up there. Um, I gotta get my chimney piping and everything and punch a hole through the roof, but I'm gonna get started on uh, installing this thing. So I've got it mounted up there. You can see I decided to hang a piece of drywall uh, so that I wouldn't have to take it back down and rehang it. And in order to do that, I started putting my baffles in so I wouldn't have to get in there to do baffles with the drywall in there. And uh, so I just kind of made these, made these mounts out of some perforated metal and some rods. I'm gonna go back and get some lock nuts for these. But uh, yeah, that's how I mounted it. I just have a couple, couple bolts, lag bolts on either side of these. So there's eight lag bolts total in the ceiling and four rods and now I can adjust, kind of tilt it if I need to and that's it. Well. I cut a hole through the drywall with my sawzall and I cut a hole in the baffle and I drilled a hole in my roof. So now I have to go up there and cut it out. So I'm up on the roof and I've got my little pilot hole started to cut the, the hole for the vent for the furnace. And this is the piece of flashing that goes there. Uh, so I'm going to get this thing uh, cut out and get this tucked up under the shingles and nailed in. some nails in there. That's what it looks like installed. The glue on these shingles was ridiculously hard to peel up so it did a little bit of damage but uh, I think once the sun comes out and heats it back up the glue will kind of reset and it should be good. So it was getting dark out there up on the roof so I hurried up and put the uh, the B vent through the roof lashing and got it all sealed up. So I can't show you that right now, but I'll show you what's going on on the inside. So I changed my mind and I ended up mounting the switch right here for the furnace as opposed to just having it in the fuse panel over there. So I, I mounted this switch and that runs up to this electrical box here. And that's where I'll get my power to the unit. And then you can see, um, Got my hole cut in the drywall there. Here, I'll take you up there. So this is what it looks like. So this is just a single wall, regular, like 90 degree piece of ducting, four inch ducting. And I just screwed it to the, uh, the outlet of the furnace here. And then what this is, is this is an adapter, um, like this whole piece if I can get back far enough from here to here it's an adapter to go from single wall to this what they call B vent which is a double wall vent and then uh, this is a five foot piece of that B vent that goes all the way up through the roof and I know this hole looks kind of bad but there'll be actually a trim ring that goes around there so you won't see that so the reason I need this double wall B vent here is, um, you know, obviously the vent gets pretty hot from burning natural gas. So this, uh, you know, pr provides a little bit of a insulation. And then even with this B vent, you're required to have a one inch 
distance minimum to anything that's combustible. So that's why that roof flashing uh, looked the way it did. You can see that. So there's one inch at least around the B vent where it goes through the roof and around the drywall here. And then like I said, I'll put a trim ring in there. And then I'll actually have to fab up uh, another piece of ducting around this to make sure that when I blow insulation in here, none of that insulation gets within an inch of that B vent. So it might be kind of hard to see here with the light, but um, this is a, just a little clamp I put on the pipe to support it between where it attaches to the furnace and the roof. So I just cut some OSB shims and put them in there. And uh, yeah, that's how it attaches up here. So I got my electrical connections in the furnace, just uh, wire nutted together there. And I got this piece of flexible conduit. I bought one that already had the wires in it and the fittings and I just cut it to length and then this will just go get wire nutted into this electrical box here. And that's what the electrical looks like all buttoned up. So this is kind of my plan here uh, to take my gauge off and put a valve, make a dirt trap and then go up the wall with this six foot piece and tie into that flexible line there. So we'll see how it goes. So here is what I did with the gas line coming in the building. I put a, a valve here and a dirt trap here. And I also did a T just in case I want to add an appliance in the future. I can just shut this valve off and add something in there if I want. And then I came up and went from three-quarter pipe to five-eighths flexible. And then finally a half-inch valve at the furnace itself. And you can see I got my trim ring on the chimney pipe up there too. So once I turn the gas on, um, I'll just have to leak check this with the fluid because I can't actually pressurize it now that those valves are on there. So we'll see how it works. So I did want to get back up here and show you guys how this vent turned out. I ended up, ended up finishing this when it was dark outside. So I couldn't film, but basically you've got that flashing and then your B vent comes through, simple vent on top. But uh, what happens is before this storm cap goes on, you seal the, um, I don't know if you can see that, but you seal the B vent to this flashing and you slide the storm collar on and then you seal it again. And uh, so really, Everything is just going to run off this storm collar and never even have a chance to get up in here to the second layer of caulking. So it's sealed up really well. It's been raining a lot. There's no leaks on the inside of the building or anything. So yeah, that's how it looks. So now the rest of the magic has to happen in the crawl space, which I'm not a huge fan of. I have, I'm pretty scared of spiders, unfortunately, and there's a ton of them down there should just be able to turn this with a crescent wrench. Oh man, that's tough. <sighs> should be it. So it's time to head down in my crawl space to hook up the gas line running to the garage to the house. It's my little crawl space access. So I've got some one inch called CSST, flexible, flexible gas tubing. Got a box full of tools, box full of fittings and pipe. And basically I have to drag these boxes all the way to the other end of the house where the furnace and everything is. So this is what my crawl space looks like. Not super fun. And I have to get all the way over there by where those pipes are. So you can see where I punched through the sill plate here. And that uh, three quarter inch pipe comes from the, the garage. And then my existing gas line is here. 
and this is a one inch pipe and then it necks down to half inch so I've got to tap in somewhere here to uh, tee in and go out to the shop and I'm working in like 30 inches worth of space and I'm just laying I'm just laying in complete filth right now not a fun place to be all right so here's what I got going on I put this cut the old one inch pipe out put this piece in with a T and then went into the existing back in and uh, then I used this CSST one inch you can see it's hanging down I still have to fasten it up but you can see the one inch goes up to here and down to three quarters and I put a valve there and then it goes out the building so if I wanted to work on the pipe that's in the ground between the shop and the house I can turn this valve off here I don't know if I wanted to add gas to like a barbecue in the future or something so this stuff was pretty nice this uh, flexible tubing was really easy to work with that other one there actually goes to my dryer somebody put that in and it's probably 20 feet longer than it needs to be and it just hangs there so I've got to fasten that up too but uh, you can see I've actually got leak detector you can kind of see it I've got leak detector on all the joints right now and it looks like we're good to go all right so I finally have I finally have the gas line flowing gas from the house out to here so I just need to do a last little leak check for everything that wasn't pressure tested well now that there's actually gas flowing out here from the house I'm going to try to get this thing fired up tonight and the last thing I have to do is put this uh, little thermostat that came with my furnace on there uh, I will note that the furnace and thermostat did not come with the thermostat wire all right so it should be ready to fire up got breaker on power on and then come over here to the thermostat so I just heard the blower kick on and that should run for I think like 30 seconds So, got the furnace running, it's blowing some nice heat. It's been running for about half an hour now. It's not making a crazy difference in here. I think I'm losing most of it through the attic. Uh, so the plan is in the, ne the next couple weeks to get a ceiling in here and blow some insulation in. I've already got most of my attic baffles done in prep for that. So I've actually had the furnace installed for about a year now and I'm just, I just got around to editing the footage. And I figured it was a great time at the end of the video to put in a little update about how it's working and show some things that I missed the first time around. So I did want to go back to this gas line here. When I showed it earlier in the video, I actually had the valve up here after the flexible portion, which doesn't really do you any good because then you can't take the flex line off and basically disconnect the furnace because you'd have to take the valve off to do so. Uh, so so I swapped it around I put the valve down here I also put a 90 degree here because this is gonna get uh, wall sheathing drywall and so I want the valve just coming out of the drywall so that you can still shut it off disconnect the furnace if you need to do any service on it um, and then there's there's a little better shot of that trim ring there and the only other thing I'm not going to show I never filmed it because I've got a ceiling now is that I did blow in insulation 
and fabricate a one inch piece of flashing that went around that B vent so that there's no insulation up against that B vent. So now the big question a year later is how is this furnace working? And I can tell you that before I had a ceiling, the furnace didn't work at all. Basically, it would maybe add five degrees to the temperature of the shop because it all just went right out the ceiling and through the roof vent. But now with the ceiling, and I've got R30, R38 cellulose blown into the attic space, uh, but I still have no wall insulation except just this small portion I started here. Uh, it is about 32, 34 degrees outside. It's actually snowing right now. I live in Michigan and it's December. Uh, it is 65 degrees in the shop and it actually, the furnace took it up to 68. I just shut it off to basically so I didn't have any background noise while filming. Uh, so it's still about 65 in here. You can see I got a couple fans blowing it around, but Overall, in terms of this being shop space, this furnace is going to work perfectly. It already works perfectly, and it's only going to get better when I insulate the walls. Uh, if I was heating this place all the time and I wanted it 68, 70 degrees all the time, it wouldn't be enough furnace. It definitely it, it runs a lot in order to maintain a temperature above 60 degrees. Um, but you know for a shop that you're not going to heat all the time flip the furnace on it takes about half an hour to heat the shop up when i come in here uh, it's working great so if you're interested in other videos about the shop or in particular how i got the gas line run from the house in the ground to the shop be sure to check out my channel and all the other content on there if you made it this far thank you you're a trooper this was a long one